taking time out of your day to join us to talk about a very important social issue. During the 2016 presidential election, less than half of college students exercised their right to cast a ballot. As campus leaders, we hope that student athletes can help drive these future numbers higher. We're joined this morning by our University of Arkansas Monticello political science professor and director of governmental relations, John Davis. Dr. Davis has presented to several UAM teams about student athlete voter engagement, and we're excited to have him bring this message to all GAC student athletes. Dr. Davis, the floor is yours. Thank you, Commissioner Pruitt, and thank you to the student athletes and coaches who are taking time out of their, their day, whether it be live or in uh, the recorded version of this short presentation, uh, to show an investment in civic engagement and voting. Um, I know that I'm not alone as, as being a, a person who considers himself a part of the GAC family that cares deeply about our students, uh, our student athletes, uh, and I'm uh, really honored and privileged today to, to get to share uh, with you all uh, some basic information, but also try to take a moment uh, to, to stress the importance of civic engagement. Uh, um, so as, as uh, Commissioner Pruitt said, I, I'm a professor and director of government relations at UA Monticello. Um, and I'm very passionate about civic engagement and, and voting is just one of those key components, which we'll talk about more here in just a little while. Uh, to me, uh, civic engagement is, is really a question of being actively involved in your government. Uh, it's an ongoing process and working to make a difference in your community, state and nation. I'm really fortunate. My job affords me the opportunity to spend a considerable amount of my time talking with college age students like yourselves. I know you all have been probably more tuned into current events in the last several months uh, as of late than probably you had been in your lives previous. Uh, you can sense attention and even might feel personally frustrated uh, and might believe that your voice doesn't matter. And I'm here to tell you today that your voice does matter. Now, perhaps more than ever, the country, your state, and your hometown need you to use your voice. In a moment, we'll get into the nuts and bolts of how to register to vote, how to vote, etc. But I want to take a moment to help you recognize the unique and powerful position you have as a student athlete. That's right, you have power. And so one thing I want you to think about after you watch this later on today, you're going to the team meetings or class or practice, is to ask yourself, what are you going to do with this power? Student athletes are a unique and small subsection of young people who are role models, leaders, and have a unique opportunity to be a powerful voice collectively and as individuals. Now, student athletes in particular in the GAC and, and a collection of universities and colleges that have uh, moderate to lower enrollment sizes find themselves in a position where you have a unique platform or stage. They're highly visible. All of you are, are known in your communities, you're known in your campus communities, you're invested in by your campus community, your professors, administrators, and especially your coaches are invested in your success, both on and off the field or court. You're a team, and that can't be stressed enough as a key advantage to your powerful role. You inspire others, whether you know it or not, your classmates, uh, faculty, other folks on campus, especially people back home that cheer you on, consider you an inspiration and a role model. You're also disciplined and trained in a unique way to seek out a goal, even if it means sacrificing a little bit of yourself for a bigger good. You know what it is to work hard for something that's bigger than yourself. You're also empowered by your unique life experiences, your education, and your environment. And part of this environment, again, is the support of coaching staff and others who are available to assist you in, in all issues of life, but especially the question of voting and civic engagement. When we're talking about civic engagement, I know it's one thing to just give you a definition and move on, but I want to give you some concrete examples of civic engagement and what that really means. So my job today is, is to be one of many who empower you to be more actively involved. The first thing I can stress upon you is to be registered to vote. Seek information about issues and candidates. Don't just focus on national politics, but recognize that your hometown needs you. Even if it's far, even if you're currently far from your hometown on your college campus, you can make a difference back home. We'll talk about that in a moment. Finally, vote. After you're registered, 
after you've thought hard about candidates and issues and maybe asked questions and sought out information, vote. Perhaps most importantly though, even after voting, is after the election, don't stop. Seek out opportunities to be more active in your hometown, your college town, use your collective voice and power individually and as a team and your power as an individual to create positive change and get others to join you. So why be civically engaged? This is truly a critical time in our nation, at the local, state, and national levels. We need you, I need you, your family and friends need you to begin a lifelong commitment of being a more involved citizen. Know your right, know your rights, do what's right, and use your power. I'm not here to lecture. I am probably here to preach a little bit because I do firmly believe in this, but more importantly, I believe in you. And I know you've got a role in influencing in, positive, in a positive way uh, the, the governmental outcomes we all want to see. As the commissioner said, we didn't do a great job in 2016 of, of encouraging and educating young people to vote. And this is regardless of party affiliation or policy issue. I had sort of a change of heart in 2016 when I realized that when I would encourage students to vote, I didn't always give them the real nuts and bolts instructions that they needed to carry out this business. And voting in the U.S. is a confusing process, especially for people who are 18 to 22, 23 years old. Y'all are incredibly tech savvy. You handle technology and, and different sort of issues of modern society in ways that are far more graceful than, my, than I can handle it or someone older than me even. But the problem is our voting mechanisms are largely the way they've always been. And it is a little alien to people who are just getting into it in the first time. So what's next? Well, first you need to determine if you're registered to vote or not, and if not, do so immediately. The clock's ticking on this one. Next, decide if you're going to vote absentee, early, or in person, or in the day of the election, which is November 3rd, for those of you taking notes. Then make arrangements to see if you're successfully voting the way you want. All along, keep track of important deadlines and follow instructions carefully. And this is where a lot of folks get lost in the process. Don't, don't feel overwhelmed and certainly don't be intimidated by the process, but just know there's some rules and some instructions you gotta follow and deadlines along the way. Once all this is accomplished, vote. Get others to vote. Keep the momentum going after this fall. Begin a lifetime as an actively engaged citizen of your town, your state, your country. Remember the way in which our form of government is meant to work assumes you're actively involved. So if you don't participate, government's just gonna move on without you. To help you begin, I've put together some information for those of you who are residents of Arkansas or Oklahoma, the GAC footprint. Each state conducts elections and voting differently, so it's important to pay attention to your state's rules. If you're not a resident of Arkansas or Oklahoma, that's okay. I'm here to help you with that too. Just email me or do some digging online and you'll get the information you need. Also, remember to take advantage of your support system you have on campus. When all else fails, call your hometown county clerk or election commission office. They're really typically very nice people and they're happy to help you out. And finally, don't hesitate to reach out to me again if there's anything I can do. Well, what I'm gonna do now is uh, pull up some information that's pretty detailed. Uh, so I'll do it in, in, a, in a way that allows people to take time to take screenshots, or of course you can rewind this if you're watching it as a recording. So one thing we want to do, and I'm realizing here, let's see here, there we go. So what we're looking at here are basically some, some question and answers that y'all might have. Um, a lot of students who I talk to don't know if they're registered to vote or not. Uh, there's a, a, what's called the motor voter law from the early 1990s. So if you've updated your driver's license, there's a good chance that the staff person that was helping you with that asked if you wanted to register to vote. And I've had folks who didn't recall if they actually said yes or no. Um, if you're a college freshman or a sophomore, you probably haven't had to renew your driver's license, uh, but you might have thought, well, maybe I did my senior year in high school, maybe I registered to vote. There's a good way to check that, okay? So for Arkansans, 
this blue link here at VoteView or ARNOVA.org. And again, the link's live and, and you can go back to this recording or you can take a screenshot. will allow you to enter in basic residential information, name, birth date, uh, to get uh, the, that information as to whether or not you're registered to vote. And if you're registered, um, you can skip this next process, which is I want to register to vote. Um, in Arkansas, you can go to the Secretary of State's website, following my cursor here, this link. Uh, you can print out a PDF of a registration form. Remember to use black ink and fill in those sections one through 11, roughly half the page. At that point, at this stage in the game, I would go ahead and encourage you to uh, take that to your county clerk's office. Uh, and I've been told by county clerks in Arkansas that even if you're a resident of say Pulaski County in Arkansas, uh, but you're a, a student in say Arkansas Tech, Washita Baptist, uh, that you can go to the county clerk in your college towns county uh, and that that person will send that information to the appropriate uh, person in your county. Now, why go through all this rigmarole? Uh, we're getting near the deadline to register to vote in Arkansas and in Oklahoma, which I'll get to here in a second. To ensure that everything gets delivered on time, uh, I would encourage you, if you're able, uh, to hand deliver these documents. Uh, you don't have to, you know, you've still got a little bit of time, but I would certainly start this registration process today, if at all possible. Now this is real wordy. So again, this will be available to you, don't panic. Uh, you might consider getting a screenshot of it as well. If you wanna request an absentee ballot, and first I'll explain what that is. So the traditional way to vote would be to go in person the day of the election, November 3rd. Uh, it might have a little bit of a line or a queue, um, most, in most cases, especially in Arkansas, you're going to have a computer screen and you're going to go and you're going to kind of log into this process with um, uh, volunteers at the poll. They're going to lead you to one of these computer screens and you'll vote similar to what if you would do if you were on a touch screen, maybe an iPad or a Kindle or something like that. And then you would be finished. You'd confirm your results, you'd hit enter, you'd walk out. And that can still be done today, but there's a growing interest, especially this year with COVID-19, uh, for people to socially distance and to do what they can to avoid contracting or spreading COVID-19 to others. So it's understandable that a lot of our Kansans and a lot of folks across the country are seeking other ways to safely vote. One way to do that is to get an absentee ballot. Now, another reason why absentee ballots are relevant to you is that many of you don't actually live or reside. You're not a resident of your college town. And so if you are, um, say, a registered voter in Arkansas, a registered voter in Oklahoma, but your hometown is miles away and you don't think you'll get back in time to vote in person, absentee balloting is always a good option for college students. So the best thing I can tell you if you're in Arkansan is to call your county clerk's office, uh, request an absentee ballot uh, uh, form, application form. They'll then mail one to you, to your mailing address. You'll fill that out carefully. And if you have any questions with that process, you can contact me or you can contact your county clerk. You'll mail or hand deliver that. Um, and then they will very quickly, they're very fast at this, they'll send you a ballot. And the ballot's gonna be in a, in a big folder, big orange folder. And there's gonna be another folder inside of it. And you're gonna fill out a little application, another sort of ballot form, pledging you are who you say you are. Uh, you'll want a photocopy of your driver's license or university ID or some sort of other state issued identification. You'll figure out how you want to vote and vote on those issues. Your ballot will look just like it would on a computer screen if you went in on voting uh, election day, but it will be a paper ballot instead. You'll fold all that up, follow closely the instructions that you're given, and you can mail or hand deliver that at any time between now and election day, November 3rd. Now, the important thing is if you're mailing your absentee ballot to do it on the early end of this thing, okay, I would encourage you to do it as soon as you get it in the mail. Take some time out of your day to carefully read the instructions and fill it out. Um, they're supposed to um, recognize your absentee ballot if it has been mailed to them by election day, but to avoid any kind of delays in mailing in Arkansas, I would certainly encourage you to be uh, more proactive on that, on that front. So certainly send it in when you can. Now, in Arkansas, a cool thing they do have is if you've requested an absentee ballot or if you voted absentee, 
uh, you're shortly uh, thereafter put into a tracking system. And so you can actually watch the process unfold. So you can uh, see that you've, it's been recognized that you've requested a ballot, uh, that your ballot is out for delivery to you, or that your ballot has been sent back and it's in transit or that it's been received. And that gives you a little bit of peace of mind because it is sort of a different process uh, than going and voting in person or uh, either on election day or early. Now, if you say, that's great, John, but I really want to vote in person, there's nothing wrong with that. You can go ahead and mask up and socially distant and be real safe in that process. And there's really two ways to do this. One is to vote early. So early voting in Arkansas begins 15 days before election day. Again, election day this year being November 3rd, 2020. Some voting precincts are open, some are closed on early voting. Uh, so the safe bet is to, to vote early, but also check your county clerk's office to make sure uh, that uh, your site, your precinct is open or that you, perhaps you need to go to another location to vote early. If you wanna vote on election day, which is something I typically enjoy to do, is uh, make sure you're registered to vote. Go down to this link here on voter view. I've got the cursor right there. It'll provide you with the locations where you can go vote. Uh, your, your voter registration is gonna be linked to your residency. And so there's gonna be one or maybe a few precincts or locations that you can go vote in person if you want to the day of. Now, if you're a resident of Oklahoma, your process is gonna be a little bit different than if you're an Arkansan. And that's the tricky part about voting is that states and local officials are the ones who really govern and make the rules for this thing. And so you wanna be real careful, even if your roommate or your teammate is a resident of another state, his or her process may be different from yours. Now, Oklahoma is a really good centralized system. Um, and so if you don't know if you're registered to vote, there's a really great link here. Um, they, Oklahoma has what they call the Oklahoma Voting Portal. You put in some key information, it'll let you know whether, whether or not you're registered. Um, if you've confirmed that you're not, you want to register to vote, uh, I have here the link that allows you to do that. Uh, you have more time in Oklahoma, um, but you still have to register to vote by Friday, October 9th of 2020. Okay? But again, why wait? Do it now. I would go ahead and do this today um, if, if you can, just get the process started. So this is real similar in that you will fill out some information uh, either through the portal or um, you can print it off to the Secretary of State's website. You'll still want to mail or hand deliver that voter registration. So if you're in Oklahoma and you want to request an absentee ballot for a lot of the reasons we've already discussed, uh, here's some uh, helpful links to help you out with that. You have an absent application process for an absentee ballot, and then uh, you can either do that through calling, calling your Oklahoma State Election Board or going through the voter portal, again, which is a really handy tool. Um, you can then, once you uh, secure your absentee ballot, you want to be sure that um, you, you follow the instructions very carefully. Again, those instructions are going to be different in Oklahoma than they would be uh, from other, other states. So really pay special attention to that. And I've made a little list here of some of the things on this bottom half of this slide, some things that you need to have at the ready, things you need to be aware of as you're going through the process in Oklahoma to vote absentee. Again, don't be intimidated. Uh, just know that it's gonna take a little bit of time and patience and you wanna read the instructions very carefully. If you're in Oklahoma and you say, I wanna vote in person, you've got um, some, some processes here in place in terms of early voting that are not that dissimilar from what we see in Arkansas. Uh, but again, every state varies just a little bit, so be real careful to make sure that you're adhering to Oklahoma voting laws when it comes to early voting. And again, if you're a purist, you want to go vote on election day, I get that. Um, here is uh, your information from where you can cast your ballot on election day if you're an Oklahoma resident and registered voter. Finally, I want to take, leave this up for a moment. Um, I know that interlocking AM uh, might uh, weaken this argument a little bit, but I truly care about every college student and every student athlete, particularly those of y'all in the GAC. I want to make sure that you exercise uh, your, your right to vote, your right to being an actively involved citizen of this country, uh, and that perhaps most importantly, you find ways to use the power, the unique power you have as a student athlete uh, for, for good. Um, and so if I can ever be of help, if you have any questions, 
or if say you're a resident from a state that's not Oklahoma or Arkansas, even if you play for a GAC team, uh, I'm here to help you. Okay, so there's my name again, John Davis, and that is my UA Mont, uh, my UA Monticello work email. That's davisjc at uamont.edu, and I'm more than happy uh, to uh, contact, or if I'm contacted, reply to an email. Uh, if we need to talk on the phone, we can set up a time to do that. I'll give you my office number. Um, but this is something that I'm committed to. I want you to be committed to it. And know that time's ticking. So this is a great week to make sure you've got a plan on how you're going to vote. Uh, and before that, make sure that you're registered. And if not, take the necessary steps to make sure that that's the case. Close out of the screen share here. With that, if there's any questions or, or anything, um, I'm, I'm happy to answer any, any uh, potential issues that may arise or anything like that. Dr. Davis, do you have any suggestions on, like I know in Oklahoma, we have some state questions on the ballot this year. Um, you know, like if I wanna do my research ahead of time, do you have any suggestions on where to go and what kind of resources I can access? I know sometimes I get to the ballot box and I'm usually pretty familiar, but then there might be, you know, a, a county election spot that I didn't realize I was voting for. Certainly. So it's a great question. Um, so, in, and I'll, I'll give examples for both states. Um, if you are in Oklahoma, um, the first place I would look would actually be through your Secretary of State's website. Uh, you should have a, um, a ballot or at least sample ballot on statewide issues. Um, the other option that you have closer to home is going to be probably if you have a local, uh, local newspaper, uh, seeking out a copy and getting a copy of the local ballot. Um, this is just a, a quick reminder for everybody, but depending on your town, uh, your ballot's gonna look different based on others that might just live the next town over because you may have city council races, you might have a mayoral election, you may have local uh, or city or county issues on the ballot. And those are the ones where we really rely on local media for those things, um, which is just one of a million reasons why we need to better support our local newspapers and journalists out there. Uh, statewide issues, again, a statewide newspaper. I know Oklahoma has some, some fine newspapers, uh, the, the Tulsa World, I think I'm familiar with, a few others. Uh, I would certainly go and look at um, uh, website searches to look at, at state and local news media for coverage. Uh, I know in Arkansas, we're fortunate to have um, a agricultural extension service that's uh, committed to uh, civic uh, education as well as other traditional agriculture endeavors. And they do a great job of a report um, that's pretty lengthy, but it has a lot of information pertaining to any and all constitutional questions on the ballot or any statewide um, issues, including you know who's running, what position they're running for. But they probably give the best um, objective uh, non-partisan uh, analyses I've seen on those ballot issues. Uh, and I'm, I, would, I would think that Oklahoma would have a um, similar service provided either through extension services uh, or through the Secretary of State's uh, webpage. And again, I can't stress enough for those of you who are watching this um, after uh, it's been recorded, uh, don't be shy, don't hesitate to reach out to me. If there's anything I can do, um, I, I regularly tell my students, I, I, I don't care that they know my opinion on politics and I don't really wanna know theirs unless they wanna share them, but I want us all to have opinions and I want, I want us to see those opinions exercised when we vote. Any further questions? If not, I appreciate everyone's time. I'm especially yours, and Dr. Davis, and um, thank you for helping our student athletes across the GAC become more civically involved. Well, thank you, Commissioner. It's, it's an honor and a privilege uh, to get to do what I can to help our, our students, particularly our student athletes. and. Uh, I really want to stress upon them the, the potential they have 
uh, that is, is unique and, and is collective individual, uh, collective groups, but also individuals uh, to have a voice and to, to exercise that voice in a very positive way. So thank you. Everyone, I think that's it. Um, have a great afternoon, Eric. Um, when when will we get this back out to campuses? Uh, as soon as uh, it's in my hands, it'll be uploaded to our YouTube page and to our Facebook channel. Uh, additionally, we will uh, tweet out the link and uh, publicly, and then obviously share it with all of our SIDs, um, so it can be shared as multiple ways as possible. And Eric and, and Commissioner and, and Audra, I want to thank the, the three of you for putting this on today and, and getting this organized. Uh, I'd also like to offer those PowerPoint slides. Uh, I think I may have sent them in an earlier email, but I'm happy to have you share those to uh, any groups if, if that's at all helpful to people. Absolutely. I, I will send that out with the recording internally and Eric can post it where he sees fit. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Everyone have a great afternoon. And um, again, Dr. Davis has left his contact info in multiple places. If you have any questions, please reach out. Go vote. I'll see y'all later. Thank you.